white light is actually made up of waves of colour. You usually can't tell when you shine light through the air because those wavelengths stay together. But when you shine light through glass, as we discussed in the previous video, it refracts. When glass fails to focus these waves of colour to the same point, it causes chromatic aberrations. Glass that's used for lenses is low dispersion glass, since it manages not to split the waves of colour. If you were to use high dispersion glass in your lens, the image might look like this, with the colours fringing and splitting away from each other. Interestingly though, some glass elements are used exactly for their high dispersion qualities, such as prisms. Prisms are pieces of glass that you place in front of the lens for cool fragmented effects such as these. This technique is usually used for photography, but celebrates the imperfections of high dispersion glass in order to create unique in-camera effects. Now, let's look at how the sensor works to register these waves of light. To understand the camera sensor, we need to first understand why it was designed the way it was. To do this, we have to look at how our own eyes perceive light. We have two types of light receptors in our eyes, rods and cones. Rods are best for perceiving luminance, and cones are best for perceiving colour. There are more cones in the centre of your eye, and more rods on the outer edges of our eye. This is why you can sometimes see something in the corner of your eye in the dark, but when you look directly at it, you can't see it as clearly anymore. Humans have three types of cones, blue, red and green. Shrimps have 16 types of cones, so imagine how different the world looks to them. But digital sensors are trying to best reflect how a human sees the world, so therefore a sensor is made up of, yes, blue, green and red receptors. In digital terms, these are called photocytes. It takes four to nine photocytes to make up one pixel, and there are thousands of pixels on a sensor. These photocytes have filters built in, so they only allow certain waves of colour to reach the sensor. The common misconception of filters is that they add colour, when in fact, this is wrong. If the filter is green, it doesn't add green to the image, it just stops all other colours from coming through, except green. Some cameras arrange their photocytes on the sensor like this. This is what's known as the Bayer pattern, named after its creator, Bryce Bayer. This is a common pattern, but it's important to note that not all sensors are designed this way. You may have noticed that half the photocytes are green, whereas only one quarter are red and the other quarter are blue. This is because when we look at the spectrum of visible light, the blue end drops off into ultraviolet and the red end drops off into infrared. Humans aren't able to see these waves of colour because they're either too low or too high for the cones in our eyes to register, much like how dogs can hear some sound frequencies that are too high for our human ears to pick up. However, some insects like bees can actually see ultraviolet light. This is how they can detect nectar in flowers. But these colour frequencies just aren't visible to the human eye. We do, however, get a wider variation of green because it's in the middle of the colour spectrum, so there isn't the same drop-off on either end. Therefore, we need more photocytes on the sensor to reflect that. Thank you for watching. Let us know in the comments what you would like to learn next and don't forget to like and subscribe.